What is up, YouTube? So today is not going to be a Guild War video or an RTA video. Uh, I'm actually kind of dropping like an emergency video because Laya's uh, skill set just got data mined from the most recent patch. And I really want to talk about this because she is going to be just so broken, right? She's going to change RTA. She's going to change Guild War immediately. <clears throat> Absolutely immediately. Like she's going to disrupt the Guild War defense meta tenfold, right? So this is definitely something that I'm going to have to post before I post my RTA video tomorrow, I guess. Uh, so we're just going to jump straight into it, right? There's going to be no no unnecessary yapping. So data mine is, is really big here, right? Now, the first thing I want to talk about is she has a 117 base speed. So as a warrior, she's like pretty fast, right? 117 speed is not exactly the, the high end of the spectrum, like on the Rams or the K-Rons or whatever, but she's kind of in that area where people with really good speed gear is already going to be really fast. Now, is her S3 or her kit going to be something that requires her to be super fast? No, I think she's going to be something that requires a lot of HP, a lot of bulk, <clears throat> um, maybe like mid speed to kind of go after uh, a, a lot of units. So in terms of the base speed, it's just a nice thing to have right now. Self imprint is obviously going to be HP, which is really big because she's health scaling. So units like, you know, Dark Corvus, um, having that self imprint hp with 18 percent really helps boost her damage and lower the gear requirements uh something a unit like kind of like lethe i wish had that self imprint hp as well um but unfortunately they put effectiveness on her right now the first skill i want to talk about is her s1 right now her s1 is basically just a regular attack is her 15 cr so uh, we're going to be having to put four mulgora uh, four more mulgora into her skills which already from that perspective is like damn it's like we're already in a mola drought we got to drop four okay fine but this also means that you know you're going to lose out on five cr if you do decide to grace of growth her so that's definitely something to think about now this is obviously going to work hand in hand with her s3 so anytime her s3 is down which is uh spirit of the rock uh she's going to provide a 15 percent cr push to herself and also a dual attack from a random ally now i think this is going to be super busted because if you're going to be running her with a dual cleanse or if you have units that can sleep units like ddr units like bdom units like uh, or units that just have some type of provoke or if you have Stenny on the team um, these dual attacks can make or break uh, the difference in whether you win or lose an RTA now from a guild work perspective that probably doesn't really matter that much but just from an RTA perspective dual attacking is is pretty big so that's I would just say that's kind of the one thing to kind of I guess pay attention to which means she just has infinite value uh, even after she s3s right so let's just take a, a unit like dark corpus for example right you dump an s3 you just have s1 to provoke them into you to reset your skill cooldown but this unit she's pulling dual attacks every turn which is huge right now i won't get too much into that let's look at her s2 real quick her s2 is going to dispel all debuffs from all allies and increase combat readiness by 15 percent, which goes up to 25 uh, before decreasing skill cooldowns of all allies except for the caster by one turn now obviously she's getting to work as a cleanser we haven't got to our artifact yet but this unit is just so good like unfortunately we're gonna have to plus five her on her Mulaglora as well so we're looking at maybe like a plus 13 plus 14 unit i believe depending on her s3 because s3 is plus five this is plus five the other one's plus four so she's a plus 14 unit right and dis decreasing skill cooldown of all allies is really big because think of units that could reset like lua like Nakwal, right and that's why in rta she's going to be an instant game changer because right now how many units do we have that can deal with units like ddr units like Nakwal or lua that have those extra turns that can skill reset you or sleep you or whatever uh we only have things like bunny dom we have lilius with ancient dragon legacy we have to run protection set which is only applicable to lua so Nakwal, we realistically have not that many answers to her as of right now right um but this is going to change everything, right? We're, we're going to be able to have our, abil our abilities available, uh, which I think is very big. Um, but everything does work hand in hand. So let's go to our skill three. Uh, the Spirit of the Rock. Now, her damage numbers did come out. Now, we are going to have to test in terms of what's going to be the absolute correct threshold uh, and whether or not we're going to be able to use a different artifact for her in Guild War. But just speaking from an RTA perspective, uh, this is basically, I'm just treating this as like a Dark Corvus S3, right? You Soul Burn S3, you're going to probably kill one unit and you get extra turn, you S1, you pull a dual attack, you could probably just win off the game just like that, right? So I can see why this unit is limited because damn, this unit is 
busted, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, just looking at base offer S3, it looks like you're just going to be building her straight HP, maybe some bulk, maybe some speed, and that's basically it, right? Maybe you could argue some area of uh, effect resistance, um, but would we rather have all of that, maybe like 100 gear score into HP instead or bulk instead or speed? Maybe, right? Uh, only time will tell. We'll have to see when this unit comes out. But just the simple fact that... Um, if she does get reset, she's going to decrease all skill cooldowns by one turn, and then she's going to work hand-in-hand hand with her S2 to basically cleanse off any of the skill resets coming in from Lua, from Nakwa, or any of those units. And it's going to be just a game-changer, right? It's just super big. It's just, it's just, this does damage, and then if you kill, you pull a dual attack, it, it, you get 15 CR, like... There's just like so much value coming out of this, right? It's just it's it's insane to me that this unit is is, is built like this. But uh, I won't complain, right? Uh, looking at her artifact now, her artifact increases health by ten percent. So similar to something like Prayer of Solitude, right? At the start of the turn, has a hundred percent chance to decrease debuff duration of the caster by one turn, and it can only be activated once every three turns. Now, obviously, this is pretty good because like if she's any type of debuff, right? So let's say there's one, two, three, four debuffs on her. You're still decreasing the debuff duration by one turn. So another unit that's that does this is like hand guy, right? Except this is in an artifact form instead of like an actual unit that presses S3. So this artifact is actually kind of absurd if you ask me, because it's good that they made it activate it once every three turns. Because if it's every turn, it'll be completely broken, right? Well, no fucking shit. But this, I think, as of right now, would probably be the best slot for her, just simply because of the fact that, like, you know, Dark Corvus already has the Randall, right? You already build him a little bit of ER. You don't really need to cleanse that one debuff because usually, if people are gonna go the uh, the debuff route, they're gonna try to overload uh, and just kind of lock down the DC, right? But uh, the increase HP in, by ten percent is big. is great for her damage. is great for her survivability, and just th this artifact overall is super good. But you could put this on other units. So I think off the top of my head, I think APOC Ravi. Would we be able to see a return of a Ravi? Because this is kind of reminds me of something like a Crimson Seed or like a Timeless Anchor before it got nerfed, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I might be absolutely coping right now, but I really hope that this artifact can unlock a lot of new units that maybe I haven't really thought about as of right now, right? This is kind of just off the top of my head. But so far, I think this artifact is amazing. And, and this is just kind of like a rough uh, kind of discussion about her skills, right? I want to quickly talk about in Guild War, because obviously this is a Guild War focused channel. And I want to point out why she's going to be so disruptive in this current meta. Uh, so let's just jump straight over there uh, for now. So let's go. Now, another thing that I would like to talk about is <clears throat> not well on defense, right? So she's essentially become useless on defense because she cannot be countered by Laia and also be evaded by Laia as well. Previously or currently, we have to run units like Bunny Dom uh, with an Earth unit like something like Destina uh, because we want to bait the element, right? Fire to Earth so that we can have maybe like an Idle Cheer, push her DPS, things that we've seen historically. As you can see here um, from the Fribbles Guild War Tracker, you can see that uh, in my videos previously as well, we've run Destina, Benny Maru, LRK. And essentially, live makes it so that you don't really even need to do that because one thing is. Let's not forget, she provides a 25% CR push to your entire team. This is just insane for the tempo for the rest of the team overall. But the more important thing is, if you have her artifact at plus 30, which I think a lot of us are going to, uh, she will just completely kill the DDR and Aqua defense that we've seen some small success from, uh, as you can see in front of you, right? Now, obviously, the safest option is rank cleaving, but why is there such a low win rate? Because people often forget, oh, AU can actually cut CR. Now, what can happen with Benny Maru um, offenses and why they lose is, guess what? If the uh, the LRK is faster than the Destina, loses a turn, maybe you don't have enough bulk on your Benny Maru, maybe you just gear gapped, you can lose as well, right? <clears throat> now, this means you just need to bring two units to address the third unit pair with Nako DDR, and it's essentially game over because that artifact is going to auto cleanse the sleep from DDR, and there's just no nothing else to say here, right? You also cannot seal this unit because, similarly to Hand Guy, um, he 
It reduces the debuff duration by one turn, and that's within his skill set. Similarly to Hangai, Laya's, all of her skills are just within her skills. It's not a passive skill that can be sealed by the Knockwall, which is why she's such a strong counter to Knockwall. And I think this really is going to be the death of the Knockwall meta. It's going to be completely over. And I think, honestly, it's already been somewhat over because we've already found solutions as she's been in the, the game for quite some time now. But... I think that this may be the hardest Gilward defense meta to play, or maybe we've ever seen recently, because the release of Alvira crippling the likes of, you know, Candy, AU Fiend, <clears throat> now Laya is going to cripple Nakwal on defense. So, you know, another unit that has this type of skill reset uh, uh, capability is Lua, but she's not really being mentioned because we've already have units like Bidom, uh, Edward, um, even Lilius that can kind of deal with her and address her really easily. Um, so she's just going to be completely blown out of the water, right? Now, in terms of her offensive capabilities, she is not exactly a Dark Corvus replacement. Now, <clears throat> as her damage is not really quite as high with a lower base HP and also having worse scaling, uh, you will see on screen now uh, of the damage ratios that we are looking at when considering her build path for best optimization. Uh, now, as always, we will have to test her in mock battles and RTA to really see what's the best option. But overall, having her S3 is just a nice touch enough to get that extra turn, pull that S1 dual attack, having that 25% CR push for the rest of the team is all great stuff, right? But <clears throat> you can see uh, the Laya S3 no soul burn does 48.65% of her health. And Laya S3 with Soul Burn does 77.8% of her health. Now we take a unit like DC, which is kind of like a direct comparison upon her, you know, skills at being data mined. DC S3 with no Soul Burn does 60.8% of his HP. Now DC S3 with Soul Burn does 91.21% of his HP comparatively to the 77.8% of Laya. So Laya is not exactly going to be a DC replacement. I think DC is still going to be king in terms of running any type of DC, uh, Iseria, Destina, push comp, uh, or in other words, shotgunning. But it, like I said, it's just a really nice touch to have in her skill kit to just have the S3 have that damage, uh, which I think is going to be a lot more impactful in RTA than actually Guild War in itself. But again, the unit hasn't actually been released yet. So all we have right now is just a bunch of yapping and speculation. But... I think this does give us all a pretty good idea of how the Nakwa meta is going to be basically dead. And this is just one example. If we just look at any other Nakwa defense on Tracker or any attack history, I can guarantee you that Laya is going to be able to fit that quite well. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll be moving over to some additional thoughts. So let's go over there now. So I guess in, in for my closing thoughts, I think that uh, I'm overall, I'm really excited for this unit because... I've had a lot of issues fighting Knockwall and Lua in RTA, respectively, and I think that this is going to give a very nice solution to a lot of players who perhaps are struggling against Knockwall defense, because they're not exactly easy to deal with if you don't have the necessary tools, right? Maybe you missed a Medimaru, maybe you missed Bundy Dom. I think, like, not just thinking from only, like, a talentless perspective, but thinking about from, like, a top 100, top 500 top 30 you know it, it's it helps guild war overall to simplify the defenses but for me personally and for i think a lot of competitive guild war players it will be it'll make things more difficult in terms of crafting defenses now um, not to say that a lot of us were running uh, Nakwa to begin with because it was you know somewhat solved uh, but just in general right like if you did want to run a Nakwa defense if you did have any type of cook it's basically just kind of out the window it's no longer i would say viable right um, but from an RTA perspective, I'm really, really excited. A lot of you guys know that I'm going to be pushing for Legend again this season. And uh, the season's starting up real soon. So I'm, dude, trust me, I'm going to be doing a lot of testing, not just for YouTube's sake, not just for Guild Wars sake, but from an RTA perspective, I really need to make sure that if this is a tool that can help me counter one of my weaknesses, maybe I'm going to change up my pre-bands. It, it, ju it just might be the solution, right? Um, but I think this, is, this video's gone long enough, enough yapping. And I think uh, overall, great unit. Unfortunately, it's limited, but I get it. You gotta, you gotta make your money smile gate. I'm totally fine with that. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys refresh shop, get as many bookmarks as you guys can because she is worth it. Anyways, I'll be signing out. If you guys did enjoy this type of video, please drop a like and comment below to help me with the algorithm, please and thank you. And until the next time, um, yeah. Uh, catch today's stream, catch tomorrow's video for RTA, and then the following day will be a Guild War video. Uh, I'm going to be posting a lot of content coming up because AI is coming out, season's coming out, so <clears throat> lots of content. So thanks for watching.
Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.